Hi everybody, I'm Zillablitz and welcome. Today I thought I would offer up my impressions on Sicily 43 from Assault Games. I've spent about 15 hours now playing the game and about five hours kind of reading through the rules and learning the game and kind of exploring the components and things. So I, I'm, I hesitate to call this a full review because there's elements of the game I haven't looked at like off-board artillery, uh, close combat that much, and then I haven't played the campaign, which is a huge part of this package. But I've spent enough time with the game and a bunch of people asked for my impressions as we were posting the playthrough of the game on the channel. So I thought I would make this short video to touch on some of the aspects and share my thoughts on the game and on the system as they stand right now. Let's do a brief overview of the game before we start digging in. This uh, Assault Sicily 43 is the second game in the Assault Games system. First was Red Horizon 41, which was Eastern Front. This game takes the combat to the Western Front, specifically Sicily in 1943, and more specifically the actions surrounding the Jella Beachhead. Forces in this core package are uh, German and Italian forces against US forces. There are plans underway to add British forces as an expansion to this module. This game is a tactical World War II combat game. You've got individual squads, individual, ve individual ve vehicles fighting it out over a plethora of scenarios, as well as an extensive dynamic campaign, which is really kind of probably the one of the hearts of the strengths of this game box package. So impressions, let's start out. First up, I, the physical components themselves, I think are worth calling out here because they are uh, particularly of note, both in terms of functional design and in terms of visual appeal. In particular, I really like the maps. They're heavy cardboard, that very thick cardboard, and you can put them together in all sorts of different ways to make all sorts of different shapes. The, the visual presentation of the terrain just looks really cool and gritty and tactical. And it's the kind of, uh, maps are such a big factor, right? In terms of drawing in interest and appeal and a good map makes you look at it and you wanna play the game. These maps succeed at that. You look at it like, oh, I just wanna play with this. You know, it just makes you wanna put your hands on it, put them together and set up a battle and get going. Likewise, I think the units and the unit cards are really, really good. And I wanna mention those in combination because I think there's something to be said that connects to the visual appeal and the artistic design behind this is the, the hexes are really large and you've got hex shaped counters that fit on the hexes and give you space to add like little terrain components like trenches and stuff like that. But the stacking rules are also really light. Like there's very few circumstances under which you're gonna have more than one unit in a hex, like vehicle transport and close combat are two of those most common exceptions. But for the most of the time, you're gonna have one unit in a hex. The hexes are nice and big, so you can see the terrain behind the unit for the most part. And then all of the unit information sits on cards and these cards are you just arrange on the outside of the gameplay. So as you're looking at the map and playing the game, it's got, a, you know, I, I don't really feel like miniatures is the right word for it, but you could very easily use miniatures to play this system, right? Because everything is visually represented, visually represented in front of you. You don't have any stacking, so units are buried under particular stacks. You're not fiddling through them. It's easy on the fingers, and all the unit information off the outside makes it a very clean visual environment for the player to be able to look at the map, understand what's going on, and understand the decision matrix that they're operating with, Visually, I think the design and the art come together to this game to make it a really fun experience to just parse and look at. So I'm starting to repeat myself, but to summarize, that visual presentation combined with some of the game design decisions really make it for a beautiful environment to play a tactical game in. The other thing that I don't think can be understated is just how much is in this box. I mean, you got tons of maps, tons of units, tons of unit cards, formation cards. You've got a campaign scenarios. And I think it's worth mentioning now, too, about so, so I think all of this stuff is re replayable, but one of the things that really, I think, highlights this system is the way they use formations in the game. And so you might have a scenario that's going to bring together, say, you know, two infantry formations and an armor formation for the Germans against two armor formations and an infantry formation for the U.S. forces, say, or something, or the Axis forces, U.S. forces, however it works out. And those, you have formation cards, and you basically pick your formation, or you could do it randomly, or you could do it, your opponent picks. I mean, there's just so many ways you could take this formation system and play with it. And 
That means that every time you play a scenario, depending upon the formations that you've picked, you could pick completely different infantry formations, for example, and get a completely different interplay of units, almost feeling like a completely different scenario. So the formation cards here just make this a sandbox game. It's very much, I think, a system purchase in that there is almost unlimited gameplay here. I mean, this is kind of a desert island game. You could take this and play this for hundreds of hours, just with different combinations, maps, making your own scenarios, playing the campaign, which is branching and forking, is going to be different every time. I mean, there's just so much stuff in the package that allows for a great variety of gameplay. And that brings us to gameplay. I want to divide it up into two parts because I have a lot to say about combat and I want to save that for the end. But everything else movement, the back and forth nature of it creates this dynamic fun to play system. So, you know, basically you, you, each side is activating units in sequence and it's based on, your, based on your command and control and different elements. So there's so much back and forth between the game. So as a player playing two player, you're not waiting for your opponent to be done for a while. It's, it's a fast playing game where you're constantly engaged and you constantly stay in touch with, with the action, which I think is a really fun way to build a tactical system. Solitaire 2, there isn't a dedicated bot for this, but it works really well. There's some minefield elements here that I think you'd have to work around with, but those don't show up in very many scenarios and they're easy to figure out as a Solitaire player. So playing both sides Solitaire because of the back and forth nature, I find this a really fun experience and I would definitely recommend it to a Solitaire player. Now I wanna talk about the combat where I'm gonna spend most of the time in this impressions video because I think there's a lot to say about it and I've had a lot of thoughts about it and I've got a lot, a longer experience with this. I don't think I can do this quickly. So sit back and relax if you're interested in listening to some thoughts and random musings on the combat system. First up, this is a very unique system. I've not played with a system like this in a tactical combat game like this. And the way it works is you've got colored dice of different strengths. Red is the strongest or the most kind of deadly die, if you would, all the way down to the uh, blue die, which is the weakest die of all of them. So you get red, yellow, green, blue. And as you're calculating combat, you know, you're looking at the the range of the unit firing, and you're gonna pick out certain set of colored dice, and then the unit has defensive characteristics, and you're gonna be adding dice, and you create a pool of attack dice and defensive dice. And then both sides, both players, roll their dice, and then you use a matching up system to basically knock off the results. So if the attacker scores a critical hit and two hits and a suppression over however many dice they roll, the defender might roll like two hits and a suppression, but not roll a critical hit, and you match those up, the, the matching ones negate each other. What's ever left over in excess on the attacking side causes damage to the defending unit. So as you're calculating combat, you're factoring in everything runs through this system, right? So it's range, it's the defensive characteristics of the unit, the terrain the unit is, any intervening terrain, things like smoke and stuff like that. Is the unit dug in? Is the unit digging in? Has the unit just had a fast action movement? You've got a spotting mechanic that is done for a good number of the combat situations depend upon the de depending upon the defensive status of the unit. So this is a, a rather detailed process to evaluate each firing opportunity. This is for ranged combat, again, for each firing opportunity in the game. What you end up with is kind of a mathless combat system, which I found as I played the game more was really cool because I realized how often our tactical combat games and war games in general are dependent upon odds and math and combat points and factors. And so a lot of times when I play other games, I'm thinking, okay, I've got a strength of combat strength of seven. If I add this unit, I'll get to a combat strength of nine. Their defensive strength is three. It's got a one column shift. Well, if I bring in this air power, I can shift the column back. So you're doing a lot of things in most games that have numbers in your head. And this game takes the numbers out. Now there of course is math behind this system, but it's not readily apparent to the player as you're doing it. But what happens as you play more, and this is where I think is the, the real strength of the combat system, is that you're getting this kind of organic feel and the decisions you're making for me felt more connected to kind of tactical decisions a combat commander or a squad leader would be making in a certain situation. Right. So you're thinking, OK, I've got this certain firepower and it's like, oh, red, red, yellow. That's pretty strong. Oh, that's a strong defensive unit, though. They've got a pretty good position. We might not have any success. And oh, we got to fire through smoke and stuff like that. But maybe I can have this other squad beside us add in and that's going to give us a little bit better chance. 
So your, your brain becomes kind of grounded more in the tactical decisions rather than in the numbers behind those decisions. Like, you know, the closer you are, the better you're going to be. And you can see that represented in stronger and more dice, perhaps. But you don't get locked into that math behind it, which is a really, really fun way for me to play a tactical combat game. It feels like the decisions, the math doesn't get in the way. It feels like the decisions are more directly connected to the tactical decisions you'd be making on a battlefield. And that in itself, I think, is a really, really fun thing to experience in a tactical combat system. It's really cool. That's what I really like about the combat system. And that's why I think it's really the heart of, this, of the superpower behind this system is this colored die system that doesn't rely on numbers, that relies on types of hits and strength of dice. Okay, but this, this system comes with the cost. And that cost is something I want to talk about. But before I talk about the that cost to this system, I need to talk about what in particular is unique about my experience with the game. I think it's very important for me to state that as I was learning combat, I got a prototype from about three months ago or so. And the core nature of the gameplay hasn't changed since that prototype that I received. But what has changed is a lot of work done clarifying the rules, organizing the rules, organizing the player aids, revising the player aids. So the interface by which the player interacts with the game in the course of the three months that I've had the game has vastly improved. So I think that's really important to understand because I think if you're getting this as part of the Kickstarter, your experience learning the game is going to be very different from my experience learning the game because you're going to have the updated and improved player aids and the updated and improved rulebook experience. And that, I think, played a big factor in some of the things that I was experiencing, experiencing as I was trying to learn this game. And, the, and that gets to the next part, which is really that there isn't any other way for me to say this. I found this a hard game to wrap my head around the combat system, not from a conceptual standpoint. I felt like that was easy. But the fact that there just are so many factors involved in calculating arranged combat. Um, you know, you've got the strength of the unit, the defensive strength of the unit, the terrain of the unit that the unit's in, intervening uh, hexes that are inside, whether you need to spot the unit. And the spotting of the unit has actually a die roll that has die roll modifiers to it, depending upon intervening terrain. Whether the unit has done a fast action in the previous turn or is under a fast action, uh, whether it's got dug in or not dug in, the unit's experience level, the defending unit's experience level. There are a number of factors, the unique characteristics of the unit. Some units have on their cards unique characteristics of combat. So there are a lot of factors. And as I was learning the game, I felt like the rule, it was hard for me to pull, to find that information in one place that was reliable. So I often found myself digging in the rules and I couldn't find something or looking on the player aid and saying, well, it's not on this player aid. I can't find it. And then it's, it, it was just a process that I felt like I was two or three hours in. It's like, wow, this feels really hard for me to execute. It was just taking a long time. It's not so much that it was hard to execute. It was just taking a long time to get the information I needed and figure out the process for range, ranged combat in a way that felt smooth. So it felt like I was struggling at that aspect of the game. Now, what also happened during this time was there was a lot of play testing going on. I, I mean, I was playing the game and I know a bunch of other people playing the game. And if you know one thing about Assault Games and the team behind the game, I don't, I'm not sure I've seen a game design studio that works as fast and as hard as these guys do, because I would say, hey, I, I'm a little bit struggling here. You know, I'd send off like a, a communication saying, I'm a little bit struggling here. This, I don't understand this rule or this feels a little bit complex. Or I'm not quite sure where the information is. And they'll say, okay, I'll read, I, I see what you're saying. Let me redo that. And I figured, okay, it's going to be like a week later that I'm going to get this stuff back. And then literally within an hour, like this whole thing would be redesigned. It's like here. I'm like, what? How many people do you have worked? Well, like, how did you do that so fast? And it would solve the problem, you know? And so, I, and then I would get updates to rules that were happening from other people playing and stuff like that and player aids and stuff like that. And by the time I got to the end of that three month process, and I'll talk about this part momentarily, uh, the information is so much better organized. The player aids, I really like the player aid now. It's got everything I need on it. It's so much faster to execute the combat. It's so much easier to understand what's going on. And I feel like the, 
that's going to change the nature of the people's learning experiences that go beyond the prototype that I've got. So the final version, I think that experience will be better. I, I think kind of highlighting my experience in learning the combat might help with some of this. So at the one to four hour mark, I felt like I was struggling with the combat system. It was taking a long time to execute it. I was having difficulty finding stuff in the rules. The player aids felt like they had some information. The rule book felt like it had some information, but there wasn't a complete set in both places. So it was just, it was, it was hard to execute and it was taking a long time to execute a fire ranged combat for me to the point it's like, wow, this is, it's a lot of work, right? Um, and then kind of like after, I'm going to say like four to eight hours or so of gameplay, the rules started to kind of come together in a different organized format. The player aids started to come together and be different, the kind of the evolution of the player aids over the course of those three months. Uh, and that was looking at, it's like, oh, this is starting to come together, right? It, it's It started to feel better. It wasn't taking as long to calculate range combat, but still, even for me, up to like that eight hour mark, it's like, this is still kind of a lot of, a lot of, time involved a lot of things to do and i was forgetting things and omitting things and leaving things out and stuff like that or getting little things wrong it's like i didn't feel like i really had that combat system down to the place where i could play a game and it flowed really organically as i feel like a tactical combat system should but then the player aids kind of reached their their most evolved state the rule book came together and it, i mean constant like little iterate iterative changes and then some big changes along the way i feel like the rule book and the player aids have really really crystallized over the last three months of the game's development. But as those came together, and as I started kind of crossing that eight hour mark, roughly, everything came together. The gameplay crystallized, and I got to the point where I could execute that combat system really fast. But I do think it's worth saying that the the amount of steps in the combat system, until you get up to speed with that, it's still going to feel like you've got kind of a learning curve to cross. So the combat system, in essence, I think, is the greatest strength because it's so cool. And when you get to that end point where you don't need the math, it's, I feel like it's faster than executing combat in other systems you know well, because you don't really have to do math. You're just like, okay, red, red, yellow, oh, green for that. Okay, green for this. Okay, red for this, red for this, red. put them together, roll them, done. It's super fast once you get to the level of being able to execute it well, but it is gonna take you time. And that's the weakness, I think, is that I think it would be easy to experience this game, get like two or three hours in and say, wow, I, I really, you know, this combat system is taking me a long time and it feels like work to kind of get up to speed with it and to say, ah, I kind of give up, you know? And so the, the other element to this again, too, is that if you're buying this game, you're buying it as a systems purchase. So I think for me, when I'm buying a game as a system purchase like that, I'm more willing to invest that time to get up to the point where I can execute the game well. And I don't have, I mean, everyone's going to be different, right? Some people will probably take longer than me. Some people will be a lot faster than, than me for sure. But I think you want to expect if you start digging in and when you start digging in and if you're going to buy this game, that there's going to be an element of time it takes for you to get up to speed with the combat system, with the ranged combat, right? This isn't really talking about the close combat or the off-board artillery and things like that are the, the campaign rules. But that heart of the game and the heart of a tactical system, again, is that ranged combat. And it's going to take some time, I think, before you get up to speed with it. Hopefully that makes sense. Those are all my thoughts and impressions with the game and with, in particular, the combat system. But I felt like it wasn't an easy thing to just say, combat's great, right? Or combat's complicated because... It's both of those things. <laughs> so it's gonna take time. Uh, and again, I think within that context of the rules evolving as I was playing it, I, I think people who go next will have an easier experience of it and maybe even learn substantially faster than I did. But we come to the final point, like would I recommend this game? Do I think this game is good? Did I have a fun time playing it? I had a, I had a really fun time playing it when I got to the point where I could execute the gameplay fast, like really fun, like this is cool. I can't wait to play Wait to play the campaign. I'm going to wait for the final version because the prototype that I have has evolved a lot in terms of some of the numbers on the units and the unit visual presentation. So I'm going to wait to play the campaign game until the final version. But I am really excited for the campaign game, for the system, and also for the future of the game. I know that there's uh, the Assault Games has signed a production agreement with Sound of Drums to help with that so they can focus more on the design elements. Uh, they're incredibly hardworking and dedicated team to making this game and making the system the best it can be. So I think that over time going forward, uh, this has an incredible amount of promise as a World War II tactical combat system. And it's living up to it already in terms of it's just it's a fun system. It's very unique. I love the diceless combat system 
uh, when you get to that point where you can execute it really fast, it's just a fun experience. The visual presentation, the unit cards, the stacking, it all comes together. This is a really cool system and I can't wait to play it more. So yes, I would recommend it, but you do want to be ready. You got to get over that hump. You got to get fluent at executing the range combat. And it, these types of things may apply to the tactical combat and the offboard artillery too. I haven't Again, impressions video, not a full review. So there may be learning curves with those systems too that I just haven't really bumped into yet. But once you get those things down, I think this is going to be a game that is just uh, a joy to play. It is a joy to play. I really, in particular, the back half of the scenario that I did with the video series on, it was like kind of when it all came together for me. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. So yeah, thumbs up for me. I think this is a really fun system. I'm excited to see the future and I'm excited to get that final version to play it more. Uh, let me know if you have questions down below. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you're interested in seeing more of the game, here is a link to episode one in our playthrough. Thanks for watching everybody.